Neil McKay, the editor of Guns and Patriots for uh, Human Events Magazine, is with us. Neil, thank you, sir, for coming on the program tonight. Hey, good to be with you, man. Yeah, you've got a uh, story. Uh, the Washington Post has a partner share in the death of Border Patrol agent Brian Terry. Now, that's a pretty explosive allegation there, Neil. Why do you say that? Well, they had a four-person reporting team that was working for months with uh, the ATF. And during this time, uh, they, were su- they were supposedly wor- working on this article called, it was a series called The Hidden Life of Guns. Oh, yeah. So here they are doing a story on The Hidden Life of Guns. And on December 13th, they come out with really the explosive one, which dealt with Mexico. Mm. That was on December 13th. Two days later, of course, is when when uh, border agent uh, Brian A. Terry uh, was was killed. Uh, well, he's the night of the 14th going to the 15th uh, by an AK-47 that was sold from the Lone Wolf uh, gun store in Arizona. In their December 13th article. They go after the Lone Star gun store with statistics provided to them by the ATF saying that these are responsible for gun crimes in Mexico. And so, you know, if they didn't know what was going on with Fast and Furious, they have to be like the blindest reporters. I mean, this is supposed to be their best. And so either they're horrible investigative reporters or they were in on it. And uh, that's pretty much the point of the article. All right, now, uh, I can't believe I'm saying this. In defense of the theory that they're horrible investigative reporters, uh, one of these reporters, sorry, Horowitz, uh, was actually suspended for several months. She's she's a Pulitzer Prize winner, but she was actually suspended for several months for plagiarism. Uh, I think, i got to tell you, Neil, I think it's entirely possible that the ATF and the Obama administration were playing these reporters, uh, didn't want to uh, 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 talk about you know what was really going on with Fast and Furious, and I don't think these investigative reporters were all that interested in investigating the ATF. I think they were interested in in hearing what the ATF had to say and turning around and writing a story that would advance the the gun control agenda of the Obama administration. Well, what we I mean they we do know that they had the statistics. Going back for say for uh, for 2010, mm-hmm. but these you know, as all of your listeners know, as you know, these are guns that otherwise would have been stopped by current procedures and laws and regulations at either the point of sale or the border. Mm-hmm. And so, if you're a reporter trying to do a story, you might want to ask, well, what are the trends? Well, there wouldn't have been a trend until Fast and Furious. Mm-hmm. Now. So the, either they so they only listed the they only listed the current year because if they had a, I have to assume that they asked well what was it like in 2009 what was it like in 2008 what was it like in 2007 and so if they you know what I'm saying it's like <laughs> where was the trend so if they didn't ask for the trend they didn't put in the trend they must have known that there was a spike you know again I'm not I mean honestly Neil and I I, I I don't think that they were even thinking along those lines. I think that they were, uh, you know, g- getting the information that they got from the ATF and turning around and, and, and passing it off as this is their big investigative story. I think they never went beyond what the ATF gave them. Well, I, think the, they're, what, I think they're guilty of horrible journalism. Well, what, what they said themselves yeah. was that there was a congressional law in 2003 that said that any kind of gun store crime connection data Mm -hmm. could only be released by the ATF for actual criminal investigations. Mm -hmm. And so what they said themselves is that they were able to get, actually this this is for the purposes of a reporter, uh, you weren't allowed to use the Freedom of Information Act for this data. Right. And so what they said themselves is that part of our job as investigative reporters is to uncover secrets. We broke the secrecy imposed by the Congressional Act and learned about the stores and how many guns were traced back to crime scenes. Mm-hmm. And so it's like and if they didn't get... I, and, and what I'm saying is I think that is probably code speak for uh, ATF sources gave us this information uh, even though they weren't supposed to. And, and we didn't go beyond that. You know, I, again, I, I think that what you've seen is, is wretched reporting. You point out uh, back in, in March of this year, 
Uh, James Grimaldi was one of the guys who uh, was part of this Hidden Life of Gun series. Sure. Uh, uh, wrote, ATF tactics to uh, end gun trafficking face a federal review. Look, they've never apologized, Neil. They've never gone back and said, boy, that, that multi-part series that we ran was, was junk based on what we know out of Fast and Furious. And you're right. That is the option here. Either what they wrote uh, sh- it should be seen as just absolute nonsense and should be thrown away now. Uh, because they didn't do their job as reporters, or they, uh, uh, you know, were were intentionally uh, carrying water for the administration. I just don't believe that they knew all of the facts about Fast and Furious any more than, frankly, a lot of the ATF agents uh, knew all the facts about Fast and Furious. I'm guessing that you first heard stories about Fast and Furious end of December through January. Uh, probably late January, early into February. Yeah. Okay, and and and, it, and again, it wasn't until John Dodson came out and and spoke publicly that you had anybody on the record talking about Fast and Furious. I think that was February seventh. Right, but there was stuff coming out. Stuff coming out, but but again, anonymous sources, single sources, nothing that you know you could uh, no, nothing firm. There there was you know there was a lot of scuttlebutt, but but not anything that you could really run with. And so what you have is you have the leader of this top team at the Washington Post Mm -hmm. that's hand-in-glove with the ATF. We know all about it. We're studying this. Nobody knows more about the hidden life of guns than us. And on February 1st, he puts out the article where he basically says, well, there's not really a lot of evidence, and that actually there were guns stopped. I mean, that plays to your point of carrying water. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You know, again, I I think the job that they've done has been absolutely wretched. We talked about the uh, the day— of the last House Oversight Committee hearing, Washington Post ran their first front-page story on Fast and Furious. Uh, but it was full of, again, anonymous quotes from DOJ officials who were praising Fast and Furious and who talked about how unfair it was that Congress was investigating. And then the day after the House Oversight Committee hearing, where there was you know all kinds of explosive revelations, including Bill Newell, the uh, special agent in charge in Phoenix, admitting that he had talked about Fast and Furious to a National Security Council staffer. Washington Post has their follow-up story on page A14. It's like five paragraphs long. It doesn't mention any of that. It never talks about the, uh, the scope of the investigation going beyond ATF. It, 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 they're reporting, Neil, absolutely right. We can, we can maybe disagree over what the, uh, the likely uh, uh, knowledge of Fast and Furious was, but you are on target when you say the Washington Post coverage has been. Uh, you know, pick, pick, the, uh, pick the adjective you want to use. Well, even crazier is when they, uh, they, close, they quote uh, J, uh, James Kavanaugh, Without mentioning that he was uh, the hostage negotiator at Waco, I mean that might be interesting to a reader to know that. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, there are all kinds of interesting things that uh, I think the Washington Post readers would like to know about, including the fact that Bill Newell said the uh, DEA, ICE, uh, FBI were all full partners in Fast and Furious. I mean, you know, the the reporting. If 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 your only knowledge of Fast and Furious is coming from the Washington Post, you don't know anything at all about this scandal. No, 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 and and, then, and when Holder does resign, you will have no reason. You you won't even know the reason why. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that was kind of like out of the blue. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Neil, I I appreciate you coming on the program. Folks can find your column, The Washington Post, as a partner share in Terry's death at uh, humanevents.com, Right. Yes, and they can sign up for gunsandpatriots.com at gunsandpatriots.com. It's an e-newsletter that comes out every Tuesday at 8 o'clock. And I, I appreciate you having us on. Uh, I know you've had some of our other writers on. We listen to you all the time. You're doing a great job. Well, thanks, Neil. Look forward to talking again very soon, sir. Take care, man. All right, Neil McKay with the Guns and Patriots joining us here on Cam and Company.